We waited all year for the first game of the season, and now we get to break it down. That's the best part. The day after, welcome to the Sunday Blitz with Zach Bourne. That's the name I'm going with, bud. I didn't run it by you, but that's what I think works because you're going to bring the intensity, the pressure, the heat, uh, and we're going to talk about Ohio State every Sunday the day after a game. I love it. The Sunday Blitz, your name dropping on me, you know, right, right live on TV, right when we're doing this. But I like it. I can get down with that. All right. So uh, let's let's do it. Let's bring uh, bring the heat with Zach Boren. Ohio State wins 23 to three at Indiana on Saturday. It's a 20 point win. It's on the road against a Big Ten opponent. It's a week one victory. You put it in the bank and it seems like that should be enough to satisfy at least the Buckeyes, but I don't know. You and I were talking throughout. It's like, just felt like there could be a little bit more in it for Ohio State. I don't know. Does one day later, does it, does the wind, does the wind, I don't know, resonate a little bit more with you or, or how do you feel about it? This is, you know, gosh, yesterday while the game was going on, you're looking at, you know, Twitter and social media all last night. You're looking uh, at what people are reporting about the game. And then you wake up this morning, you start thinking about it. You hit the nail on the head with it's a first game on the road at Indiana with uh, a first-time starting quarterback. You're not playing Middle Tennessee State or uh, any of these teams that uh, you should be blowing out. It's a tough opponent who gave you a completely different look on offense than you were expecting. I don't think anyone, including us, thought Indiana would come out in triple option and show that look, uh, which essentially is like a Navy look, but they were doing it out of the gun. I don't think um, – we did think that Indiana would put some pressure on Ohio State's offense with blitzing guys, with running backers through gaps, with taking some chances, and they did that. Indiana's defense played great. I think – Today, more so than yesterday, you have to feel really confident. Being an Ohio State fan, getting a 20-point win on the road, first game under your belt, I think we can all agree that uh, the game was called a little conservative, which you want to. On, on the road, if turnover started to happen more frequently, if you weren't pushing the ball down the field at all from the standpoint of uh, putting some drives together, if you had a lot of three and outs, momentum's not there. So, uh, you know, I think you saw a big difference in the first half to second half with the way uh, Coach Day called the game, with the way the players kind of started to react and get their 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 feet underneath themselves. I'm happy. It's a 20-point win on the road. It's a great starting point. You have Youngstown State and Western Kentucky to share some things up, and then you've got, obviously, a massive game against Notre Dame. So, uh, Zach, would you rather – Start with what you feel like were the positives from that game, or are there things that you want to dive into that are concerns first? I'll let you pick, since I, I picked the name without running it by you. I'll let you decide from here. I, I think we can start with the negatives because you always want to end with positives, right? Especially <laughs> once it, yeah, that that's how things work. Every time we went in on a Sunday and you were looking at film, it was, hey, listen, let's talk about where we need to make some corrections. Let's talk about the negatives, but let's end on a positive because we're taking a step to the to the next week. No reason to go back. You can't change anything that happened yesterday. Right. We can't go back and replay the game over games over with. So guess what? These are the corrections that we need to make. Let's change and move forward. Let's not have this conversation again. But if we want to jump right into it, I think one yeah. of the biggest uh, things that you want to talk about is obviously the, the online plane, especially in short yarded situations. It was a huge issue last year. Uh, actually, it's, it's been a huge issue the last two years with short yarded situations. And it happened again yesterday. I think that's a bit alarming. Um, granted, you're replacing three guys in the offense line. You had three kind of first-time starters that are actually in their positions and and um, being one unit. Um, there seemed like there were some miscommunications, which is actually a great thing because if it's a skill set standpoint where there were some issues, that's a bigger problem because you're, you're not getting better overnight. Now, when you talk about communication, there were a lot of double teams that I saw in short yardage where uh, the guard, center, tackle, whoever it might be, wouldn't get off on the linebacker who was coming through the gap and was firing and 44 for them. Uh, Casey played yeah. unbelievable. And I think you saw in short yards, their linebackers were just shooting the gaps. Well, when you are on a double team and you don't come off fast enough, 
those guys are going to have free run lanes. And I think we saw a lot of that. Uh, there were some pass protection issues. I think that's going to get better. But Indiana w- was playing really well. They were giving Ohio State different looks. They were bringing – uh, blitzes that we saw from the second level, which we, which we thought they were, especially with Tom Allen kind of coaching for his job. So there's some massive communication uh, things that the offense line needs to work on up front. It felt like to me, Zach, uh, they did seem to, I think, I don't know, work through some of those growing pains. I thought as the game went on, um, both the quarterback play improved. I thought the chemistry, the rhythm seemed to get a little bit more continuity going there and I think that was probably a product of the offensive line seemingly to take some steps forward in the second half was it perfect uh, absolutely not wouldn't suggest that it was but I thought that to your point there were signs that you know Josh Simmons may have missed some blocks early thought he started to get his footing going a little bit the deeper into the game didn't think Carson Hensman you know didn't stand out to me as like really struggling for his first real significant game action at center that's such an important spot Seemed like there was some running lanes on that right side behind Josh Fryer as the game went on. So, like, it wasn't a complete effort and not a complete failure either. So, like, I thought to me, I left by, I don't know, seven o'clock on Saturday night thinking I, the pieces are probably there. And maybe in a week or two, this will look a lot different. It, it, it is. It's a confidence thing. Very first time going out on the road, faced some adversity early. They came out, like you said. What I loved is that. Almost to me, on the offense side of the ball, first half to second half was almost polar opposites, right? The the one thing that was obviously alarming in the second half, but you'll see that come, is they didn't finish drives in the end zone. But they marched the ball down the field. They sustained some drives. They were able to put things together. They were able to take some shots down the field because of better pass protection. Um, And so... Being or seeing Ohio State being able to do some of those things is obviously a huge positive, and they can build on it. You got to be able to finish, though. Have to finish getting the ball in the end zone. You know, I, I think uh, Kyle McCord, if he were to go back and talk about the quarterback draw, where there was a lane that you and I both <laughs> could have ran through, you know, he went left and said right. I think on film he's going to learn from that, right? But really, let's be honest, it's the first time he's been on a college football field with the bullets truly flying around and things happening super fast where he's getting hit. Akron's two years ago is not the same as Indiana on the road. Just totally right. not the same. And so this is a great game for him to get underneath his belt, start making some changes. He was taking those shots down the field. He obviously needs to get the ball to Marvin and Emeka more than what he did yesterday, but that will start coming with some with some new play calling. Yeah, I <laughs> – that play, um, Kyle McCord running in there in the red zone, I, I thought that Ohio State might do more of that this year. Uh, it's a product of having two quarterbacks that they think that they can put in the game, I think, that you can maybe be more aggressive and uh, from Ryan Day's perspective, not worry about your quarterback getting hurt. Kyle McCord did you know, uh, some nice things with his legs early on, scrambled a little bit. Um, but, man, I don't know what, what prompted him to make the cut left instead of right. At first, I thought, I don't know, did Chip Trainum miss the block there? He did not. And that's another guy, by the way, Zach. He he was doing a little old school fullback work out there that I thought was pretty fun. You might have uh, enjoyed that. He had a heck of a game. It looks like somebody that Ohio State will just use all over the place. But, like, yeah, Kyle McCord had an opportunity there that slipped away. Sometimes that happens in the opener. Uh, to your point, you just hope that you learn from it and get better uh, going into start number two and three and four. Completely agree. I think the negatives are over with. We're done talking about the negatives here okay. because we're, we're, we're over it. That, that's what happened. You want to start talking about positives? Correct. Uh, Kyle McCord definitely was getting better and started making better decisions later on in the game. We talk about Chip Trainum. Man, the guy runs hard. You know, I don't think anyone knew truly what we were getting when coaches came out and said Chip Trainum is going to see some time at running back against Michigan last year. I think everyone's like, oh my God, what's going on? And then you saw him run really hard against Michigan. Then you see him pick it up again this year against Indiana. And let's be honest, late in that game, you've got two all Big Ten players in Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson, and they went to Trip Trainum. I mean, that's the guy that they went to in the second half yesterday. And he runs hard. He makes quick decisions. He makes one cut and goes. And I think especially with a uh, newer offensive line where – 
there might be some miscommunication up front there if they're seeing different things you need a running back who's going to make one cut and go the more you kind of sit there and try and get a full view and then hit the home run not going to work with these guys especially early on the season so you saw it yesterday. Chip would get the ball in his hands, get straight north and south, would run hard, put his shoulders down, and, man, he looked great. All right, so what did you think, Zach, of – Ryan Day talked about wanting to play both quarterbacks. Uh, it, Devin Brown did get in. I believe it was series number four there. It was the second quarter. He said after the game when we were talking to uh, Ryan Day in the press conference – you know, the plan was maybe the third or fourth series, and then he would try and get him back in around the fifth or sixth. So what I took from that was he did not intend this to be a 50-50 true even situation, that Kyle McCord came into this game ahead and that he was going to lean on him to win the Indiana game and that it was not necessarily a true neck and neck, can't make up their mind. Like Ohio State felt more comfortable that Kyle McCord was the starter and had a little bit of separation. Uh, am I off base on that? What was what did you expect, and did Saturday line up to what you thought you might see? Um, no, I I think you're spot on with that. Um, you know, I I think Ryan would have liked to give Devin some more chances, some more series, like you talked about. If he would get in on the third or fourth, and maybe get on the fifth or sixth, I think he would have been all for that. When the game was, you know, 10-3 at halftime and it was probably much closer than Ryan wanted, he realized, hey, I've got to keep Kyle in this game. I got to keep the offensive the offense moving in the right direction. I'm gonna open up the playbook a little bit more in the second half, and I want the starting quarterback to take those reps. I think we can all agree Ryan was very conservative in the first half and he did that on purpose. You know, I I think a bunch of Ohio State fans are complaining about that, but Quarterback going on the road, you want to be conservative. You're leaning on running the football. Uh, you know, a lot of your passes are kind of short passes, quick crossing routes, quick slants, um, things like that. The one thing I guess that um, I, I would have changed is, you know, that fourth series was right after uh, Kyle McCourt threw the interception, right? And they come right. back and you do t you give the ball off twice, and then on third and like three or third and four, you call a quarterback run and Devin got blown up. And so you bring a new quarterback in the game and just three straight run plays, maybe let him air it out. But then again, at, the, at that standpoint, right, you don't want – you're throwing a new quarterback in for the first game, for the first time. It's his really first true time would be throwing a pass in a game, and it's a tight ball game. Do you want him to – you want to put the ball in hands and, and risk him making a mistake, especially in your end of the field? So I totally understand where he's coming from from that standpoint. And then as the second half w went on, you saw Devin come in late in the game. I think you would have liked to play Devin more, as I said, but I think you'll see that more in Youngstown State and Western Kentucky if they can get up and get Devin some, some reps. Here's another thing, and I don't want to be that guy, but we talk about college football changing and rules and things of that sort. Grant, they need to change the targeting. My God, they need to change that rule. <laughs> and we can talk hours about that. But yeah. the change in the running the clock to go to more of the NFL style, you saw how many less possessions each team has. You know, Chip Kelly was talking about it last night at UCLA. They had four possessions in the first half. Uh, UCLA did. And I don't think Ohio State had many more than that. They may have had five possessions in the first half. But, man, the, the, the clock goes quick. The amount of times that you're going to have chances to score now in college football is, is reduced significantly. So things are amplified. You know, I think you saw that yesterday. And I, I'm guessing that's another thing that Ryan didn't take into effect of how quick the game was going to go. So you talk about series, you know, three or four and five and six. I bet Ryan was thinking that sometime in the second quarter. You know, series five right. or six happening, you know, midway to, to late in the third quarter. And so at that point, you can't throw Devin in because you want Kyle to continue that momentum and you need to put some points on the board. Yeah, man, those clock rules are are rough, and it was tough. I mean, you're watching uh, at home on Saturday, so I'm sure you had to feel the real brunt of all the commercials, but we're sitting there, and it's like th there was no clock in Memorial Stadium. Like, here's the countdown for when you're coming back from the break. It's like it felt like they were five and six minutes, so somehow you're getting fewer plays, less football, and it's still taking the same amount of time. It, that's That doesn't make any sense. It's brutal. Yeah, well, especially when you're facing a team that I think by the end of the game, they had 20 pass attempts. Indiana did total from both of their from both of their quarterbacks. 
But you, you look at, you know, through till the end of the fourth or till beginning of the fourth quarter, Indiana, I think, had like 12 passing attempts the entire time. They're running the football. Right. So they're yeah. eating up this clock. And especially with the new clock changes, they're just trying to control the football. And that's the hard part. If you go against a passing team, you're not going to see that big of a difference. But the hard thing is when you're Ohio State and a team says, like, hey, listen, we have to limit the amount of times that Ohio State possesses the football. And this is all big teams across country the Georgias, the Alabamas, uh, all of these teams that are going against uh, inferior opponents. They're going to try and hold on to the football, and that's what you saw with Indiana. Hey, we're going to run triple option. We're going to try and get first downs. We're going to, you know, keep the clock moving, and we're going to we're going to limit the amount of possessions Ohio State's offense has. Yeah, yeah, it's going to take an adjustment for sure. Uh, and now Ohio State knows that they've got one week of experience with it. They'll get a few more before the really big one uh, at Notre Dame. Here's how we're going to wrap up the Sunday Blitz every week, Zach. We're going to go three and out. Your three players of the game on Saturday against Indiana? So my number three, I'm going to pull a Zach and Schlegs here from past years, and I've started the season this way. Number three is going to be the entire defense besides one guy, okay? So the entire defense yeah. besides one guy, they played unbelievable. I think we can all agree that this defense is going to be elite. Um, the way they swarm to the football, the way – um, that everyone's on the same page. I do think uh, one thing that we didn't see yesterday was a great pass rush, but when you're playing triple option, you're not going to get a great pass rush. Let's just say it for what it is. Um, but that was for not knowing what you're going against and for holding Indiana to three points, the amount of yards that they give up, I think total is like 156. That's unbelievable from that standpoint. Uh, number two, Number two is I'm going to go to Josh Proctor. And a lot of pe people might be like, wow, Josh Proctor. Well, guess what? This is a guy that I think everyone, including myself, wasn't expecting huge things from this year. Thought he was in that starting role because, you know, him being a senior, um, you know, he had the, the upper hand on everyone just from a seniority standpoint. He came out and laid the boom multiple times. He was playing quick. He was playing fast. Um, Josh Proctor of old might be might be out. You know, Josh Proctor Vold would make some mistakes. Yesterday, he seemed sound. He was breaking on the football, um, doing a bunch of, uh, of phenomenal things. And on TV, obviously, I wasn't there. He was coming down and laying the wood multiple times, especially early on that game. And then my number one player's got to be Chip Trainum. Um, just with being the number three guy coming out there, you've got a new quarterback. Um, you know, in the second half, they rely on you. Yes, you, you know, Ryan Day opened up the um open up the playbook somewhat but the way chip train them ran the ball got tough first downs you know they moved them back between tailback to fullback was running them out to the flats doing different things i think everyone was including myself was blown away so number 19 man he he in my in my book he's the number one star of the game love that and uh sounds like josh proctor just wants a little buck iq this week i don't know josh proctor man welcome welcome to the table he's got a seat at the table finally he does he does uh all right i love it we've got uh a lot more of these planned we're gonna get zach born involved with the sunday blitz throughout the season i'm excited to have a, another opportunity to pick his brain we're still going to do buck iq for you all for those who enjoy that i know i do it's a huge uh educational piece for me to have zach explain what i'm seeing the first time uh or ex explain the second time what i may have missed the first time how about that uh, and put that in context moving forward. I think it sounds like Josh Proctor might get that opportunity this week, but stay tuned for that. Ohio State's got one under their belt. It's 23-3. to three. Uh, I know that uh, a win in week one is all that truly matters to Zach Bourne, but we'll dive deeper into all those as we go on. Uh, Zach, appreciate the insight, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bucks 1-0. and oh. Can't complain about that, man. On to the next one. On to the next one. That is Saturday against Youngstown State. Uh, stay tuned for full coverage of that on the podcast. For Zach, I'm Austin. We will talk to you later.